Hey guys, Kevin with On Point Pro Styles in Gainesville, Georgia. I've been helping a lot of people set up their plotters and one of the trickiest things uh, they're having problems with is setting up the blade. This is not something that can be done in a couple of minutes for your first time. So I'm gonna go through the process of setting up a brand new blade and a blade holder and hopefully cover some of the details that I know some of you are struggling with and help you get through this process a little bit easier. All right, so I've got a new blade holder. Um, I'm working on the Workhorse 2, but this uh, this applies to any plotter, uh, the Workhorse, the Workhorse Eco, uh, Workhorse 2. You got to make sure first and foremost that you're using the right blade. So make sure you're using a 25 degree or even a 30 degree will work. Uh, 25 is preferred. Um, it's for really, really, really thin material, which is window tint. Uh, so use a 25 if you can. I don't have an extra 25. All my blade holders are set up. Uh, so I'm going to use a 30. So you're going to take the blade out. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to drop it into your blade holder. And you can see this one's dialed way in. So the blade's sticking out quite a bit. So the, we're going to dial that back. This gold ring here, now yours might be black, yours might be silver, the blade holder. Don't worry about that. So we're going to dial it back. And then I'm going to break this lock ring loose and I'm going to spin it all the way up to the silver part. And we're going to dial, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm dialing that blade all the way in and I'm going to rub my finger and I want to, I want it, I want to feel it kind of scratch my skin. So it's, it's literally sticking out a tiny, tiny bit. I can just feel it with my finger, just feel it. So remember, Leave that lock ring loose. Next thing you're gonna do, drop it, tighten her up. And guys, just snug this. Don't get too crazy because you'll break it. Start with a reasonable uh, force. If you're working with the uh, Workhorse Eco, it uses a lot higher force. You're gonna wanna be around 150 uh, mark. The Workhorse 2 and the Workhorse Plotters both work comfortably between 40 and 60 or so. So I've been telling people about 45. So set your machine to 45. Mine's at 51, I'm just gonna leave it there. So we've got our blade in, we're starting with a certain force. The next thing we need to do is install our film so we have something to cut on. Pull some film out, make sure it's straight, lock our rollers. Now run your blade over, make sure it's in front of one of the rollers. And we're gonna do simple little test cuts and dial our blade in manually. So uh, we're set up, like I said, I'm at 51 grams. I could barely feel it. And we're loosened all the way up. Here's why, you've got a test button on your plotter. You're gonna utilize that to dial this in very close and then we'll get even further into it. So test button. Now I wanna run it out and I'm gonna see what that did. scratched the film, that's good. So now I'm gonna move over, don't forget to move over, reset it, and I'm gonna take the top and I'm gonna turn it very little. So we're gonna take this while it's still in the machine, do it while it's in the machine, and you're gonna take this top, see if you can see it move, and we're gonna dial it about that much out, so clockwise. A Little bit more blade sticking out, so I'm not gonna pull that out of the machine anymore, we're gonna leave it in there. We're ready to go, we hit the enter button. I have a habit of doing it a couple times. Let's hit the test button again. Now this is a one inch square with a triangle in the middle. We want to be able to peel the square. In a perfect world, leave the triangle, but because this is tint, it's gonna usually take the triangle with you, but it should be, it should just basically fall apart in your hand. So let's see what that did. Back it out. Scratched it some more. So we're still a little ways off. Move it over. And now I'm gonna dial it a little bit more. Test again. Run it out. Oh, now I can see it's cutting into the film. That's what we want. But it's still not deep enough. I'm gonna move over, and I'm gonna dial it in a little bit more. 
You want to dial in your blade depth before you deal with the force. So like I said, start your machine at a good force and start dialing your blade down till it actually cuts the square. Just like that. But it broke apart from the triangle, but you can see it's still connected to the triangle, didn't completely cut through right there. Don't be fooled, there's a start and a stop point. So it's, it's gonna leave a tiny little hair of tint uncut that'll just have to break away. So that's close, that's awesome. So now you don't wanna cut through, so don't go too far. Now I know I'm really close, so what I was taking, I'm gonna take even less. I just want it to rip away nice and clean. Boy, that's clean, but it's still tearing a little. Move over a little bit more. I'm going to dial it just a tiny bit more. Take the film, rub your finger on the back of where the square is, like push up on the film and rub your finger, because if it did cut through, it's going to, your finger will pop through it. I can feel that it is super close to cutting through. So we should be about there. Again, there's a start and a stop point uh, on, the, on the triangle. It's on the left wall. You'll see the start and stop point, so it will rip there. And on the square, it's on the bottom. So you gotta look past that. Look at the corners, pick up on the corners, tear it away. There's the square without the triangle. The triangle's still on the tint. So we're good there. Now I'm gonna set it up and I'm gonna do a test quarter window. We don't need to cut full doors and back windows. A Couple of quarter windows and you're in like Flint. So let me reset this um, on off, bring her over, let's run a little bit of film out. And I'm going to set up a pattern. Okay guys, so I'm gonna open up my software. Whatever software you're using, look up a gear making model that has sort of a decent sized quarter window. A good one would be like an 18 or 19 model Toyota Camry, uh, the rear quarters. It's a decent sized quarter window, so it'll kind of put you in the ballpark. So I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna go and double check my machine and make sure we're set up and ready to cut. All right, my machine's ready, so let's get it cutting. Remember, we left it where we were able to pay, peel that square and we didn't change anything else. So now what we're looking for is will this quarter window peel away from this tint nice and clean. I'm ready to start tinting. My machine set up, my new blade and my blade holder is ready to go. Again, we didn't mess with the force, so we still have play there. You might decide after a couple of cuts, you need just a tiny hair more. So bump the force up a little bit. You're gonna notice a lot of ceramic films or some other films are gonna be two mil films or thicker films. So you're gonna leave, you're gonna add about 15 to 20 grams to this without having to set up a whole new blade to be able to cut the thicker films. So keep that in mind. So I'm ready to cut. I'm happy with this, I'm ready to go to work. And it didn't take me too, too long at all. So uh, make sure your cutting strip's good. If you've already kind of gouged up your cutting strip, I have Teflon tape on mine. Um, that's a good idea. Uh, you could even use masking tape temporarily, but Teflon tape seems to be my go-to uh, and it's extremely replaceable. Make sure your cutting strip's good. Make sure there's no residue or glue residue from the old tapes that were above it or covering the old cutting tape, that clear plastic, when you peel that away, it leaves a lot of glue on the machine and that'll stick to the tint and it'll bunch the tint up. Another thing is make sure that whatever software you're using, look for a feature, ask your software company how to do it if you need to, but make sure that whatever cutting software you're using, you're utilizing only cutting on pull. It's, it's gonna be labeled mine in film cut, 
is under the options, plotter, pull mode, pull mode cutting for tint. Uh, I believe uh, some other software is gonna be uh, cut on the pull, cut on pull, something of that nature. The, the, the point of it is this, you don't want the machine to be shoving the film through while it's cutting. That means your blade's down and it's shoving film through. That causes a mess and a lot of machines can't tolerate that and it will bunch up the film. So cut on the pull means, or pull mode cutting, means that when you select a pattern and it's 12 inches long, the plotter is going to drive 12 inches of film out of the front, the needle will drop, and it'll drag the film back through as it cuts, and then it'll start again and then do the other side. You need to make sure that you're using that, utilizing it. If you don't know how, reach out to me. I'll do what I can if it's a software I'm familiar with. Otherwise, reach out to your software guys, and they'll get you set up. So we're, we're there. We're ready to work. Um, last thing, and I almost forgot, you take your blade out. Now here you got to be very careful. You've dialed it, your blade's out right where it needs to be. Now you want to spin your lock ring and you want to be careful because if you, if, you, if you pinch them both and you turn it to lock it in, you're going to dial more blade out. So you want to take that lock ring, turn just the lock ring really, really, really tight. Just don't slip and turn that silver part. And then that's done. It's set up. I'll show you what I do with mine. This is my vinyl blade. It's a 45 degree blade. You can see it's set up. And I taped it because I'll ne I should never have to unlock it and redo it again as long as I continue to use the same brand and same blades. So and I mark it too. So I have multiples of these. I have 25s, I have 30s, I have 45s. So food for thought. Because when the blade wears out and it's time to change it, this end part, you push in, you pull out the old blade, you go in your pack and you get you a new blade, you drop it in your blade holder, make sure nothing falls in that hole, keep it clean, drop it in your blade holder, and you're ready to cut. You should be. You might have to adjust it after a while, dust might pack on the inside of that, but other than that, you're just swapping blades. So that ring, you can tape it up and mark it if you want. We're ready to go. If you have any other questions, reach out to me. I'm happy to help. I'm a busy guy. I run a full-time shop, but uh, I, I know a lot about these plotters uh, and the, the setup of the blade, and it's not as terrible as uh, it can seem, but it can, be, it can be overwhelming if it's your first time. My first time setting up my first blade, now this is probably six machines deep for me, my first one was over an hour, um, so it, it was tedious, but I learned a lot. And I even learned how to do it better now than the day I did it the first time. So guys, reach out to me, Kevin with On Point Pro Styles in Gainesville, Georgia. You can find me on Facebook, all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, On Point Pro Styles on all of them. Uh, if I can help, I will. Catch you on the next one.